I'm Matt. Uh, for those of you who saw me earlier, I'm, I'm up here again. And this is my uh, partner in crime, Shanta. Hi, how you doing? All right. So this is me. Um, my name is Shanta. I'm a former instructor at Sheridan College um, and Mohawk College. Um, I am now the Customer Experience Coordinator at Weaver Apps in Hamilton, Ontario. For those of you who don't know, you go across the border and head up for about an hour before you, uh, around the turn that you take to go to Toronto. Um, I am a serial word camper. I've been to over 30 in the last five years, and I'm happy to say that my second word camp that I ever spoke at was Buffalo. So I'm glad to be back. Um, I've done Mumbai. I've also done, um, I'm organizing Word Camp Hamilton this year, which is on June 2nd. We hope to see you all there. If you haven't got enough from Word Camp Buffalo, uh, I'm a contributor and uh, I've been called a lead dudette. So if you want to look up Matt Clancy, you can probably find that out. And I'm Shanta.ca on Twitter. Matt. That's me. I know, I look really mean, don't I? I'm not really that mean. Um, yeah, so I'm a contractor with the City of Toronto doing front end web development. Uh, graduated from Durham College, uh, full stack PHP, JavaScript, CSS, HTML, the whole nine yards for 10 years. Uh, WordPress developer for six, actually, I think that's seven at this point. Mm. Uh, I've done the whole nine yards when it comes to types of, of uh, websites uh, retail, ad agencies, restaurants, and uh, education. Yeah, I do a lot of different things. Uh, mm -hmm. Web development is just kind of what I do for my day job. And yeah, I'm the Maddie G on Twitter. All right, so what we're going to talk about today. Uh, copyright. It's a big deal when it comes to building a website. Uh, seems to be more of a big deal in the States than it is in Canada, but it's still, it's still an issue. But uh, yeah, talking about copyright, fair use, Creative Commons, uh, and yeah, and there will be. Well, you saw it's called scavenger hunt, so it's not uh, it's not something that we're doing. It, us two, it's it's going to be you guys. Audience there, participation. Audience participation. There will yes. be prizes. There are prizes. Very Canadian prizes. Shh. <laughs> we don't talk about. It. Don't talk about Fight Club. Okay. No, don't talk about. No. Um, <laughs> And some other resources that you can use when you're searching for images and other media for your website. It's meant as a primer, not as, a, uh, as an in-depth case study on copyright. That's right. So, unfortunately, copyright is not universal. Um, even we as Canadians, yes, as Canadians, from we will be apologizing a lot. Sorry. Um, it depends on what the thing is. Sometimes it's an audio recording, sometimes it's a book, sometimes it's a painting, sometimes... And so what we're meant to give you today is sort of a very high level and some guidelines when it comes to looking at copyright. How can I use this? Mainly as it pertains to your website, right? If you, you know, find a Giphy, are you supposed to credit the person who created the Giphy or credit the person who actually created the photo in the first place? Or is it content, you know? So it, it can get a little, uh, a little funny. Um, in the US, it's usually from the author's death plus 70 years. In Canada, if it's registered there, then it's actually 50 years, not 70. Um, a good resource that I found, at least on the Canadian side of things, is the University of British Columbia. They have a really good website that I used to give to all my students that sort of gave you a, a guide as to Okay, here's what the thing is, and it sort of asks you a lot of questions. So uh, we've tried to find one that's uh, close to the US, but we haven't found as nice of a, a comprehensive one. So while the actual rules here in the US may be different, know that this is at least a good way to go, okay, are we talking about a book? Are we talking about an article? How do you reference those and, and so on? So that's a really good stop, uh, start rather. And, but the question is, who owns the copyright? So who's seen this picture before? Yeah. yeah, so does everyone know the story behind this picture? So for the people who don't, um, it's the, the, the monkey selfie, which came from 2011. Um, it was a photographer that traveled to Indonesia was following a troop of macaques. 
uh, after the, he actually let the monkey use the camera, which I can't I can't see doing. That's my camera sitting on the stage there. Um, I can't see doing, and I, that's a cheap camera compared to what he took this with. But um, anyway, one of them actually took a selfie, and I mean, look at that. It's it's actually a really good picture. So. Um, but he actually made enough money with the picture to pay for that trip that he went on. But a few years later, uh, the photographer asked Wikipedia and TechDirt to take down the image on the grounds of copyright, and they refused. So uh, the question is, because the monkey took the picture, yes, it was his camera, but the monkey actually did the physical act of taking the picture did the monkey own the copyright? Or did the photographer own the copyright? He claimed that he owned the copyright. But the, uh, later the US Copyright Office actually ruled that an animal cannot hold its own copyright. So this is the, ki this is the kind of question that you've got to ask yourself when it comes to copyright. You know, um, who actually owns it? Is it the person that took it? Is it the person that owns the equipment that took it? Or in the case of, say, music, is it the person who wrote it? Is it the person who played it? These are all questions that you need to ask. And, you know, it, it, when it comes to permissions, sometimes you have to ask multiple people. Right. And so in a case like this, for example, um, this is actually when we first did this, uh, this scavenger hunt. Uh, this is all the Canadians that went to Rochester in 2017, just in the fall. So who owns the copyright? Well, first of all, you have a bunch of Canadians in the U.S. at a U.S. word camp. So the photo was actually taken in the U.S. Um, it was actually taken on Kira Howe's camera, and she's the one in the far side there. But she's in the photo. So was she the one, who, she obviously wasn't the one who took this because we actually handed it to somebody and said, here, can you take this? So the photo was taken by an American on a Canadian's camera on U.S. soil with a bunch of Canadians in it. So who actually owns this? This is, again, this becomes really difficult. And is it actually each person in there that actually owns part of it? This usually comes up when you're dealing with models. Right? When you have somebody have their photo taken or a celebrity where their photo is being taken. Is it the celebrity themselves that, that owns that copyright? Not necessarily. Is it the person who took the photo who is being paid to do those photos? Let's say it was for a magazine. If you're being commissioned to take those photos, is it the person who took the photos? Is it the person who's commissioning them or is it the subject matter? Right? This is where it can get really, really confusing and this is an example of that. Right? Where you've now not only got those three dimensions, now you've also got international borders. Because does Canadian law apply because it was actually taken on a Canadian's camera that went back across the border? Does it apply by US law because that's where it was taken and the person who actually took it was an American? So now what are we dealing with? Now we're dealing with cross-border and it gets even more complicated than that. Yeah. So, which comes uh, to fair use. So it's a legal doctrine that portions of copyrighted materials may be used without permission of the copyright owner, provided it is fair and reasonable, does not substantially impair the value of the materials, and does not curtail the profits reasonably expected by the owner. So an example of that, a prime example of that, is education. So um, you, uh, you are allowed to, say, photocopy a chapter of, uh, of a textbook because if you're not going to use the entire thing and you just want to use that one chapter, you're actually allowed to do that, but you can't do the entire thing because then you're cutting into profits, right? Um, so, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's, that is, I, I can't think of another example where fair use uh, works that way, um, but that's, that's the main one. Mm -hmm. Enter Creative Commons. Creative Commons is a legal structure under which you can license your own work as well as use the work of others 
depending on what they choose. This is a common practice now across almost the entire world. And you don't have to hire a lawyer to decipher this, okay? What it does is it gives you a structure by which you can say, I am going to allow my stuff to be used in this fashion. And some of those questions that are usually answered, it helps, um, you know, can I use it for commercial purposes? Can, you know, do I have to give credit to the creator? Whatever that piece of work is. And can I make changes to it? The Creative Commons structure actually allows you to say those types of things and determine how it is that you're going to be using this or allowing others to use it. So for example, that photo, I have permission by the person who owned the camera and the person who uploaded it to her own Flickr account to use it. Now, the license that she actually has on it, I believe, is fair use and you can use it whenever you like. Okay. Uh, I think it's Creative Commons Zero, I think it is. We'll talk about that as well in a minute. Um, but I'm using it as part of my presentation, even though I'm not being necessarily compensated for my work. Let's say that I was being paid thousands of dollars to be here at WordCamp today and give you this talk. Well, then she might say, you know, you're getting paid to use my stuff. Maybe not. With the Creative Commons structure, you can easily say, I'm going to allow this to be used for commercial use. If I'm using it in a presentation for which I am being compensated, that's considered commercial use. And if the license says that you're not allowed to use it for commercial purposes, then you are actually in breach and you can be sued for this. This is why we decided to give this talk. Because you as users of the internet or creators of the internet need to be aware of both sides of this. How am I allowed to use things? And also, how can I license them in my own way? So my recommendation is definitely go to Creative Commons and look that up. And again, it is a universal structure under which you can use these. And you can also use a combination thereof. You can say that this is not permitted for commercial use, meaning if you're a nonprofit but you're getting donations out of it, technically that is a commercial use because you're gaining money from it. If I'm just using it for a blog post and I'm just making commentary on it, well, that's not really making money. However, if my site has ads, guess what? That is actually considered a commercial use. So if you have ads running on your site and you use an image that is actually not allowed for commercial use, you are in breach of the law. So keep that in mind. And now comes the fun part. Oh, sorry, oh, yes, yes, yes. Question. Uh, yeah. Is it for that specific blog post that has the ads, or is it for the entire site? It's for the entire site, yeah. as I understand it. Okay. I'm not a lawyer, but yes. But at sometimes they say you can use it for editorial use. So you could use it in your blog post, but you couldn't use it in an ad. Yes? But you're not using it in an ad, right? right? For example, I'll give you a great one. Joey Coleman is an independent journalist in Hamilton. He releases all of his stuff on Creative Commons, including non-commercial use. The Hamilton Spectator cannot use his work because they're behind a paywall. They also run ads. Even though the post itself has nothing to do with ads or anything else, the fact is they are making money in some way, shape, or form because of his content. In the Creative Commons structure, there isn't. Oh, okay. It's basically you are allowed to use it for, crea for okay. commercial use or you're not. Okay. Then it may be a different site. Okay. Fair enough. There was another question? It, it, it's noted there that you can use it or you cannot use it, though, right? In the, in the YouTube license or wherever it is. Exactly. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Question? So then what happens if you do use it? Is it then the creator of the site can sue you. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's usually it, start, it starts with a cease and desist, and then if you don't comply, then it turns into a lawsuit. It could. Start with cease and desist, or is somebody going to start suing? Depends, it, depends on a, what, how bad they want to meet. Depends on where they're from. Depends on how. Yeah, exactly. Depends on how badly they want you to take it down. You're making money. They're going to come after you. Exactly. Yes, sir. So, for instance, using YouTube as an example, I could could I include just the link to a video? Link to it, but I couldn't necessarily embed it in the page. So 
I could blink and say, you know, check out this video and I'm going to make some comments about it. But the minute I embed it in the page, I'm using it? I, I think because you're referencing the original video, it's not like you took the video, downloaded the video, and uploaded it again. You're using the original embed code, which does automatically source where it came from originally. I think you'd be pretty safe on that one. Yeah. Usually, but again, it's, yeah. a, it's a matter of whether or not you're allowed to use it at all. Right. Yeah. Right? So it's not like, a matter of yeah, whether you're will, referencing or not. It will, have, uh, it will have a license usually with YouTube. Plus, if, the, if the, the user that uploaded it doesn't want it to be embedded, there's actually a flag for that. And then it won't show up on your site anyway. That's and then right. they can click on it to go to the original and then it would be fine. Uh, but it's, there's a lot of, it could be. Especially when, when you're talking about cross-border copyright law, um, I'm not sure which country it was, it might have been the States, it might have been Europe, that was talking about copyright being you couldn't even post a link to the original work if it was not allowed to be used. Um, I can't remember where that was, but I was like, I was reading that, I'm like, wait, wait a sec. You're basically saying that you want to tear down the fundamental uh, mechanic of the internet, a link, and say no, you can't use that. Uh, wait. So I think I don't think that's become law, but there was talk of it there at was one talk point. Of it. So if that were being enforced. Could you even just say, well, Google the following, you know, do a Google search for the following title? And yeah, exactly. Bonnie, you should mention that. Next slide. This is where you guys get to get into the participation. Your mission. Should you choose to accept it? And you will is going to be finding these things. Now, what we're going to do, suggest that you do is you get into groups. We can have a maximum of 10 groups. I think about five people per group is probably about right. You are going to have 10 minutes. Your mission is to find these items based on the criteria that is there. Okay? So, for example, a sunset doesn't say that it has to be with a certain level of criteria of Creative Commons or not. But you just have to find a, a photo of this. So the idea is we've given you a list of items and they've basically gone from the simplest thing that you can Google for, which is typically what we do, to almost the most restrictive thing on the planet. Yeah. Or not on this planet, as the case might be. Uh, that's far from right. And or, come on, that was oh, good. That's yeah. good. Anyway. That's good. Um, I'll tell you about that one later. Anyway, so here's the job. You have to go and find these things based on the criteria that you see here. So for example, a Flickr photo of a maple leaf and that is allowed to be modified and for commercial use. So if it just says a sunset, that's all you have to do. Just find a sunset, that's it, okay? So what we're trying to do is teach you that there are different ways and different levels on which you can actually look for these things. There's also a bonus mark if you find a Giphy of one of the speakers at WordCamp Buffalo in a Giphy. Good luck, because we're having trouble. Yep. Um, so if you go to shanta.ca forward slash scavenger dash hunt dash 2018, go there and you just say which group you're with and you submit the link to your answers. Do not put the Google search, okay? Actually go to the image or whatever this, the source is and give us the link to the actual image itself, not from the Google search, okay? Because the Google will just give me a, a long URL. But we want to see actually where you got it from. So put yourselves in groups. It is 1120. You got 10 minutes. Go to it. And we'll be wandering around if you need help. Set a timer for 10 minutes.
remember, there's prizes for the most points. Just saying. Yes. And potentially you can get six in the box if you find the... That's All of these up and the prize will be given out uh, if, if there's closing remarks or at the end of the day. Okay. Let's so do that. So we've got the we've got the two prizes for at least the work we are. Yes. And then you and then you put them in for a second. Yes, of course.
almost done? All right, all done. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I like that we did that at the same time. Yeah. All right, guys, time's up. All right. So we will announce the winners at the end of the day. We will go through the answers. We will double check them all and make sure that uh, everything is well submitted. So please stick around for the end of the day and uh, you will be rewarded with some imported goods. Mm. Yes. yes, yes. Not illegal anymore, apparently. Uh, apparently. But no, no, apparently not. No. Uh, you want to Yes. Okay. So where do we find some good stuff that you can use? Okay. So one of, one of, our, uh, one of our friends here actually found out that through something like Flickr, you can actually go to Flickr and search by those particular licenses, right? If you've done your search well enough, that's exactly what it should do. Some other places that you can go, um, Unsplash is a really amazing website. They have some uh, really good quality stuff. And um, uh, Andy McElwain was one of the guys who gave me that link earlier. It uses Creative Commons Zero, which basically means you can use it, you can alter it, you can change it, you can use it for commercial use, and you do not necessarily have to uh, attribute it to the original user, okay? Um, it's nice that if you do, uh, to you know, attribute that to the user, but you don't have to. And I remember reading an article uh, about uh, just under a year ago where it actually talked, uh, a photographer actually said uh, that he was actually making money after he had submitted some of his work to Unsplash because People really liked it, and then they would hire him as a photographer. So that it, it is possible to contribute to these types of communities and then make money afterwards. Uh, Pixabay is, of course, another good one uh, if you want to use it. Not many people know about Unsplash. It's becoming a little bit more popular, but Pixabay is another good one. Which is where the, the problem becomes. Unsplash does a far better job, I think, of ensuring that their stuff is from the person who took the photograph in the first place. Um, ever wondered where an image came from? Look at TinEye. 
Tin Eye actually looks at the image itself, dissects it, and will actually go and find the origin of the photo. So if you ever want to find out where your images are being used, go there, have a look, and have it do a reverse lookup in a way. That's it. That's it for us. Do you guys have any questions? Yes, go ahead. So, let's say I go to one of these, like, Unsplash, and, and get an image and use it, and then it turns out the person who posted it on Unsplash really wasn't supposed to do it. Can I say, well, I found it on a source that's supposed to be legit, and as long as I take it down, am I, I mean, I, not, not expecting you to give legally free legal advice, but is, is that likely to at least demonstrate good faith? I, I think it would, in my opinion. Um, you, as long as you can present to the court and say, look, I found this on Unsplash, that's where I downloaded it from, you know, and almost every single of the images, not even just the site as a whole, but each and every single one of the images actually says that you're allowed to use it in this format and it's licensed under Creative Commons Zero. If the person who uploaded it did not upload it in good faith, then they're actually the ones at fault, not you, right? So I think if, if that were to go to a court, the court would probably look at it and go, no, like they, they used it in all good faith. So I think we're fine. Um, again, not a legal opinion, but right. just common sense, yeah. I would say, yeah, yeah. Sure. Two things, um, one, a, a great resource, at least for in the US, is um, everybody who's a, a entertainment lawyer in, in LA, and he does entire series on uh, using uh, what you think is Creative Commons or copyrighted work or trademark things within different platforms. It's, uh, I think his site is firemark.com, okay. so Gordon Firemark, uh, but he has great YouTube videos, you can check that out. Okay. Um, the other thing is, I, uh, I've been on both sides of the coin, uh, using uh, something that I didn't know I was in violation of. Um, uh, I had podcast. One of our the graphics that I did for the uh, uh, post was uh, the seven habits for highly effective simplicity. Just the term seven habits. Uh, it was one of our most popular shows. Um, we built a graphic completely ourselves. Did not use the uh, you know any of the seven habits colors and uh, posted it on Pinterest. It was it had thousands and thousands of uh, likes, shares, uh, and, and so forth, and uh, and uh, the company for Seven Habits for Hallie, uh Stephen Covey's yeah. company, legacy company, we think, put in a um, a complaint with Pinterest, and and okay. it was immediately taken down. Mm -hmm. So in the same vein, uh, somebody took every episode of our podcast, which was just audio made videos and posted them on YouTube. And so they were getting listens and views from our content. And so it's, it was very simple. I just did a DMCA violation notification to YouTube and it was taken down. And come to find out they've done that for hundreds of podcasts. They just mm -hmm. went through iTunes and, mm -hmm. and did it. But uh, I think my, the main crux of my comment is if you're trusting on somebody else's platform, most people are not gonna take the time to contact an attorney to a cease and desist. They're just gonna contact the host of the platform, sure. and that platform, it's incumbent upon them to protect their rights. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so they're just gonna shut your account down. Right. And that could be your, your, uh, your uh, website host, your sure. YouTube channel, whatever yeah. you yeah. face your life with Well, the other thing that we were talking about earlier was on fair use. Mm -hmm. um, one of the other reasons for fair use, in addition to education that I just remembered, accessibility. If you have a book that somebody cannot read, then you can actually, under fair use, have somebody read it and record it for their sole purpose. Same thing with PDFs, for example. Uh, again, in accessibility, and in many cases, the person with the accessibility has to acknowledge that they will not allow that copy to leave their possession, right? or in some cases, they will actually have to purchase a copy of the book, and then they'll get like a digital copy uh, of a PDF or, or whatever that case is. So at least that they enjoy, you know, the person who created the, the work does enjoy the benefits of, of your, your purchase, 
but it can be recorded for things like accessibility. And that also comes under things like digital uh, media rights, uh, digi no, DRM, sorry, digital rights media. Um, if it is encoded that it, is, uh, it can't be cracked, it can actually under some circumstances be cracked for purposes of accessibility only. So you might want to double check on that one too. But yeah, playing off of what you were just talking about. Yeah. But a lot of people think fair use is what I think is fair. And that isn't what fair use is. That's not what fair use is. So people will right click and take photos off of my website and put it on their website. And they say, but I attributed it to you and I linked back to your website. And it's like, I no. No. I no, that's not what fair use is. That. That's not correct. Because if somebody takes that photo and they pin it to Pinterest from their website, they're getting the traffic. They're yeah. getting the traffic, not me. And I was out in 80 degree weather taking that photo. So, that's right. Yeah. That's right. And again, I mean, the purpose that the reason that we wanted to do this presentation was not necessarily, you know, like you said, it's, I'm, we're not lawyers, but that we wanted to open your eyes to the idea that it, you can't just use whatever you want, right? We wanted to at least give you a, a, um, a thought-provoking uh, presentation where you have to actually think twice now about what it is that you're putting on your website and how you license your own stuff, right? How can I make my stuff available or choose not to make it available and, and have it all rights reserved, right? So that was, that was the big reason behind we want, why we wanted to give this presentation. And just to add that even if it doesn't say copyright on the photo, that doesn't mean it isn't copyright. That's right. I, you know what, to, to speak to that, I would almost assume that it's copyrighted you before should. I would assume that it's anything else. You should. Um, I was at a Wikipedia editing session recently, and something that a lot of people don't know is if you put an image on Wikipedia, you put it in the public domain. So you have to have the permission of like the subject of the photograph and the person who took it. And, Good to know. Yes. I guess my question is the opposite. So if I put, if I take a picture that is my own, and then I put it on Wikipedia or something else, now do I just automatically give rights to everybody? Yes. Yeah. But but if you but if you put it on your website and then you put it on Pinterest from your website, you don't just because it's on Pinterest doesn't mean you give rights away to everybody to use it. You still own it. And people That's can right. share it yeah. on Pinterest, right. but it doesn't mean they can just take it and use it on their own website. But I think the point that, that the gentleman's trying to make is that if you're uploading it to something like Wikipedia, where the entire site is basically dedicated to sources that are open source yeah. and that are allowed to be used and, and that kind of thing, by uploading it, you're accepting their terms, mm -hmm. which is that kind of thing, right? Yeah, sorry, there's a question up there. Okay. Um, yeah. Depends on what the creator has put onto their work as, as the license. Is it all rights reserved? Is it licensed under Creative Commons? You need to check that first. How would you check that? Like if, 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 there's, if there's nothing stated, you have to go back to exactly what we were talking about. You have to assume that it is all rights reserved unless it says otherwise. And usually when someone wants a Creative Commons, they will put it with that. They image. will put it. Yes. Like with the image specifically, not the site, the image. Because unless you, like, uh, again, the default is copyright. You can't use it. So if I go into Google and I do an advanced search on your images and I get the lowest level or the, you may want to modify the conversion and all that, do you still recommend that you do like an attribution on your site to where it was coming from? I think it would be a nice idea yeah. to do so. Yeah, the fact that they've created this work and then made it available would be nice to do so. Yeah. Anything else? Yes. I guess more from the content creation standpoint, how could I go about um, making sure that my work, if I publish it somewhere, is used in a proper manner? How would you like it to be used? Then you would probably license it under Creative Commons by attribution. 
and say that I'd like it to be attributed to me. You don't have to, but if that's yeah. what you are licensing it under, then yeah, you're completely entitled to do so. And like if you have control over where you're posting it, um, I would put it as a caption right below it. Uh, you know, uh, this photo taken by, uh, open to Creative Commons, and then give the, 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 the Creative Commons license code. Um, and if it's something like Flickr, then it has that built into the, into the metadata that you can that you can attribute to that photo. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, beyond that, then you've got if you're if you're going beyond something that you have control over, you got to worry that someone uh, someone's not gonna that hasn't been in this room that says okay, copyright's the default. Um, they they might take it if there's no thing saying, you know. You can use it this way. Mm -hmm. Last question. One more question. Okay. So do you have to um, attribute right with the tag with, with the picture, or can you do it elsewhere, like say on your website, so you get a bottom like photo one attribution? I, I think as long as you've made some kind of attribution, I don't think yeah. anybody would fault you for that. Um, I, I mean, usually you would put it with the photo itself. As a matter of fact, in many cases, especially in stuff like WordPress it will actually allow you to do things like put a, a subtitle yeah, and, right. and things like that, an alt tag and a description, right. right? And actually when you download things from Unsplash, it will actually give yeah, a pop up and it'll say, would you consider you know, attributing this? And it will actually give you uh, like an embed code with that attribution to it. So I highly recommend that, okay. yeah. All right. Thank you everybody for coming. I know we're in between you and lunch. So have a wonderful time guys, enjoy.